So now let's talk about second way of charging conductors. Induction is the process of charging a conductor without any contact with the charging body. Now, how do you make an object charge without touching it? Strange, right? Let's take a look. When a positively charged plastic rod is placed near a small piece of aluminum foil, the aluminum foil would be attracted to the rod. Now, this happens because induced charges appear on different sides of the aluminum foil. Because there are positive charges over here on the charged rod, the electrons on the aluminum foil would gravitate towards the side that is nearest to the positive charged rod. It would leave behind the protons on the other side of the metal foil. Therefore, the metal foil would now be slightly polarized, which is negative on one side and positive on the other side. So, how do we produce a permanent charge by induction without having to hold a charged rod near the thing at all times? One way is by this way. First, get two of these neutral spheres they are insulated at their base then we get a positively charged rod and we bring it near to the spheres however do not touch the spheres this is charging by induction and not charging by contact so we bring it near once we bring it near enough electrons will start moving they will move from both spheres because both spheres are in contact so electrons can travel through the point of contact then, they will gather as near to the positively charged rod as possible. Since electrons are attracted to positive charge, so they will all gravitate towards the positively charged rod on this side of the sphere on the left. The sphere on the left will be a negatively charged sphere, and the sphere on the right will be a positively charged sphere. After this has been done, we now separate the spheres in the presence of the rod. Only after separating the spheres would we remove the rod. Because of this, the electrons that previously gravitated into the left-hand sphere will be trapped there and they cannot go back. So this forms two charged spheres of opposite charges, minus and plus, but of the same magnitude. So why if there is only one sphere instead of two spheres? Can we get the one sphere to become charged? and still retain the charge after removing the charged rod? Well, the answer is yes. So, if there's only one sphere that is insulated, imagine this sphere, we put this on the ground over here. Now, we will connect the neutral sphere to the ground using a wire. So this wire can conduct current. Now, we bring a negatively charged rod near to the sphere, but do not touch it once again. Once we bring it near to the sphere, it will repel the electrons out of the sphere and down the wire into the ground. And this process is called erding. So now the sphere is positively charged and the ground wire would then be disconnected to prevent the return of the electrons from the ground. And only now the rod is removed. So lastly, let's talk about earthing or discharging. Erding is a process which neutralizes a charged conductor by providing a path for the excess electrons to flow away or for electrons to flow into the conductor. The earth is a vast store of electrons and charged particles, so it can either provide electrons to the positively charged conductors or it can take electrons from negatively charged conductors. However, the earth will always attempt to make these conductors neutral. Imagine this conductor that was already negatively charged and I want this to become neutral. I would connect a wire to it, to the earth. Once a wire is connected, the electrons would gladly move through the wire and be dissipated throughout the earth. So the negatively charged conductor would become neutral. Please note that some electrons do stay inside the conductor because a neutral object will require an equal number of positive charges and negative charges. So not all electrons escape and run off. Now let's compare that to the positively charged conductor over here. If we want this to become neutral, then we can also connect a wire from the conductor to the ground. And once the wire is connected, the free electrons inside the earth can flow up through the wire and cause this object to become neutral. 
Now, please take note that it does not require one negatively charged conductor and one positively charged conductor in order for the electron transfer to take place. It doesn't occur that way. As long as there's a negatively charged conductor connected to the ground, negatively charged conductor will become neutral and it does not require the positively charged conductor to be there. Similarly, the positively charged conductor, as long as it's connected to the ground, it will also become neutral and it does not require the negatively charged conductor to be there. Both things can occur separately.